The Memphis Grizzlies are one of the hottest teams in all of basketball right now and have been one of the most consistent teams since mid-November. They have been super impressive all season and have surprised many people by being as good as they are this season as the 4th seed in the Western Conference. This is mainly come as a surprise to so many people because of the trade they made in the offseason, in which they traded away Jonas Valanciunas, arguably their best player last season for Steven Adams and a move up in the draft. Everyone thought they were going to take a step back after this move and many people even thought they were going to miss the playing tournament. But obviously, this has been far from the case. The Grizzlies have a record of 23 and 14, which ranks 4th in the Western Conference and quite comfortably honestly. They have a 4 game gap between the 5th seed and them and have made it quite clear that there is a tier gap between them and the rest of the West. The Grizzlies are ahead of schedule and are officially here and they are here to stay. So let's talk about it. Leave a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. I drop regular NBA content and with the NBA season going on, this should interest you. So do subscribe to the channel. Moving on to the video. So first, we need to talk about the best player on this team who has been going nuts in the past few games and this whole season really, Ja Morant. Ja Morant is my favorite player in the entire league. He is objectively one of the most exciting players to watch in all of the NBA and he's been going crazy recently. In the last 3 games, he's averaging 34.7 points per game, 6.7 rebounds per game and 4.7 assists per game on 55% from the field, 80% from the 3 point line and 74% from the free throw line on 6.3 free throw attempts per game. The Grizzlies offense has been slightly made aside from him in the stretch. But they won all 3 of these games thanks to the ridiculous carry job Ja has been doing offensively. Ja has taken a massive third year leap this year. And for the Grizzlies to be the contenders in the elite team, which they have the potential to be, Ja needs to be that guy in the playoffs. And I'm almost 100% sure he will be. As in the first round against Utah and in multiple playing games previously, Ja has shown what he can do in big moments. Even in the game against Phoenix, he was brilliant. Ja has legit been a top 15 player this season. And if you want to make a run, you need a guy like this. I wouldn't really call Ja a superstar yet, but the qualities he has shown have been very promising. He affects the game even when he isn't having the best scoring night and is ridiculously consistent. These are two qualities for a superstar in my opinion, but his defense needs to get to at least average before I can call him a superstar and on the level of other guys. But his playmaking man, it's legitimately scary. He has a box creation of 11.5 this season, a mark which ranks 7th in the entire league and puts him in the class of one of the best on-ball playmakers in the league. Box creation is a stat which estimates the number of open looks a player generates in per 100 possessions if you are wondering. To be a great playmaker, you need to have a lot of scoring gravity and this is something Jai has improved a lot in this year. He's averaging 27.7 points per game per 75 possessions this year, which is one of the highest marks in the league. Not many players have the rim pressure he does all time, and he definitely has the rim pressure for any guard in the NBA right now. He's shooting an absurd 68.4% of the rim on 5.4 attempts per game. He is the best guard finisher in the league right now and has been super impressive making passes out of these drives. He averages the second most drives per game and averages 13 points per game through drives this year. But the most impressive thing about Ja has been his pull-up shooting. Ja is shooting 40% from 3 on 4.4 attempts per game this year, which is one of the best marks in the entire league. Although I don't think it's super sustainable, the flashes for the future are super impressive and the fact that he's punishing defenses for going under screens is awesome. This is an issue he has faced in previous years. He's shooting 40.7% on 2.2 pull-up threes per game. He isn't really shooting many mid-range jumpers, but his floater game and shooting from short mid-range have been awesome. Another super impressive part about him this year has been his pick and roll game. He's averaging 0.93 points per pick and roll possession and this is super impressive. He's shooting 46% on the shots he takes off pick and rolls, which is an improvement from the 40% he shot last year. 
the sex really high in all high volume pick and roll ball handlers this season overall ja has been fantastic and at the end of the day he is the franchise star and the franchise player who has the potential to be the best player on a championship team whether or not he's there right now is a question which we are getting answers to as time progresses and everything so far has been only positive in my opinion but the reason i believe this grizzlies team is so special and can definitely make a deep run in the playoffs this year and they're here to stay is their depth This team is so well built through and through and has such little flaws is actually insane. Almost their entire rotation has been built through the draft and picking gems in unlikely positions. And this is what you need to ace as a small market team. So let's talk about some more players who have been fantastic this year for them. Let's start off with one of the league's best shooters, Desmond Bain. Desmond Bain has been nothing short of extraordinary this season. He's averaging 21 points per 75 possessions on 58.4% true shooting. He's legit been one of the most efficient scorers in the entire league, shooting an absurd 41.3% from 3 on 6.8 three-point attempts. The most impressive part about this is the way he gets his points. Last season a lot of his shots were catch and shoot attempts, but this season he's been taking pull-ups and off the dribble shots a lot more. A lot of this is thanks to his improvement as a ball handler which is shown in glimpses during the summer league where he went absolutely berserk as a primary ball handler and went off averaging 24 points per game on 69% from 3. No, I didn't stutter. He actually shot 69.2% from 3 on 6 plus attempts per game. His off-ball game has remained elite this season and he improved as a ball handler. He's a perfect scoring complement to Ja when playing together and can do a really impressive job job without Ja as well. As we saw in the 12 game stretch without Ja where he was just as effective as a scorer. His dribble hand of game with Jaren Jackson has been immaculate and super effective. And as mentioned before, his pull up shooting has been ridiculously good as he's generating 5.4 points per game of pull ups this year on great efficiency. He's also shooting 46.5% of one dribble pull-ups and 39.7% from 3 on one dribble pull-ups. Almost all the shots coming off a of pump fake. His pump fake is legitimately one of the best in the entire league and his shot right off the pump fake is just as good as maybe like a Klay Thompson. He's a perfect complimentary star any team would love to have. And the fact that he's on such a steal of a rookie contract and fell all the way to pick 30 is insane. Moving on, let's talk about one of the best perimeter defenders in the league, Dylan Brooks. Dylan Brooks is one of the league's most disruptive defenders, doing an exceptional job at guarding any matchup he's given. People might have criticisms about how physical he is and how he might get away with some calls, but there's no denying how good of a defender he is and how ridiculously impactful he is on that end of the floor for this Grizzlies team. The Grizzlies in the 12 games without Ja had a defensive efficiency which ranked one of the highest in NBA history. And one of the biggest reasons for that is Dylan Brooks being healthier than he has ever been this season and playing big minutes for them. When Steph Curry was guarded by Dylan Brooks this season, he shot 2 of 7. In their previous 3 meetings when Brooks is guarding Steph as a primary defender, Steph shoots 11 of 31 from the field and 4 of 13 from 3. Way below average for Steph's standards and anyone's standards really. Though you might have issues with the way he guards players, you cannot deny that he's one of the best defenders in all of basketball and one of the most impactful ones. With both Dylan Brooks and Jaren Jackson on the floor, the Grizzlies have a defensive rating of 106, and when Brooks is off and Jaren is on, their rating gets worse by four points. The Grizzlies defense holds up with only Brooks on the floor too, showing his importance to this team on that end of the floor. And actually this season has been great offensively and has taken a leap. He's averaging 24 points per 75 possessions on negative efficiency, but this is a place for improvement. He's been passing more this season and though his offense is inconsistent, I expect it to get consistent when he can play a set of games without having to go to break due to injury or health and safety. For example, when he got some consistency going in the 12 games without Ja, in the last 5 games of the stretch, he averaged 26 points per game on ridiculous efficiency, which is what he can be offensively when he finds consistency and will probably find this consistency by the end of the season in my opinion. 
Next up, let's talk about some players who might not jump out of this raw stat sheet but are really important to this team. Kyle Anderson is the glue guy veteran presence for this team. He's a player put in when the Grizzlies are in like a crisis and you can just see the difference he makes for the team. He's a great passer and a good secondary ball handler alongside the guards or the wings the Grizzlies run next to him. The Grizzlies do a decent amount of slashing off ball and Kyle Anderson does a great job at finding these cutters. Even without the ball in his hand, he's an average three-point shooter who can be very effective. He's a solid defender, solid ball handler, solid shooter and just overall a great glue guy to have on your team. But it feels like he's going to be moved in the trade deadline for an upgrade or more assets because the Grizzlies have three first round picks in the next draft and they definitely don't need so many. So they'll probably look to move them and Kyle is probably the guy who might be getting moved due to his contract and skill set which many teams can trade for and would love to have. Another player who is a super important piece to the Grizzlies depth and team is Tyus Jones. Tyus Jones is legit one of the most efficient ball handlers in all of basketball and is the pinnacle of assist to turnover ratio. He runs the second unit to perfection, quite literally, though the offense isn't as awesome as it is with Ja on the floor. But to be fair, Ja is one of the best offensive players in the league and raises the Memphis offense to the second best in the league level. But Tyus Jones does an exceptional job of keeping them afloat even without Ja, running the Memphis offense at a top 10 level in the minutes without Ja Morant too. He's legit one of the best backup point guards in the entire league and can do much more if he's asked to. As we saw in the 12 games with our Jamoran where he averaged 10.3 points per game and 6 assists per game and only 1 turnover per game. Again, remaining on top of the assist to turnover ratio, pinnacle. Moving on, Brandon Clark is looking more and more like his rookie self and has been super impressive this year, shooting 63% from field, 78% at the rim and 56% on short mid-range jumpers. These are numbers which are very similar to his great rookie season. Though the 3 point shot is basically non-existent at this point, he's very valuable defensively and has been an awesome role man with his ridiculous athleticism. A Jaren Jackson Jr. and a Brandon Clark front court is probably what they want to run in the future. And in the minutes they've run it, it has been absolutely dominant as the Grizzlies have an offensive rating of almost 120 and a defensive rating of 105.5 in the 140 minutes they've played together. Though this is a super small sample size, you can see how effective it is and how effective it can be. And this is the reason why they run it a lot in the clutch. Defense is definitely one of the most important qualities for this Grizzlies team. They started off the season really rough on that end, being the worst defense in the entire league for a lot of the start of the season. But they've been historically good since then. It started when Dylan Brooks came back. And in the games with our Ja, everyone hit their stride defensively, as they had a defensive rating of 97.4 in this 12 game stretch, a mark which would rank top 6 in the last 40 years, ever since the 3 point line came into existence. Defense is still the identity of this Grizzlies team, and the top 4 defense they had last year was more probable to happen than the worst defense in the league they had this year in the start of the season, and we've seen that in the last 20 odd games. And now with the offense being so good, it makes the Grizzlies one of the best two-way teams in the entire league, a quality which most top-tier contenders have. Steven Adams has played a decent part in this defense this season, being so good recently, as he came back into himself after a rough start to the season. He's been great offensively too, as a screener and a passing up from the elbow. He's not Marc Gasol and all, but the Grizzlies run a lot of plays where they make Adams get the ball at the elbow and make Ja and Bain cut off ball and he's really good at delivering these passes and he's quietly averaging 3 assists per game this season, almost all coming from this playstyle. Some more players to quickly check off are John Conchar, who's the greatest player of all time, Zaire Williams who's a project who I'll be making an entire video about later and guys like Santi Aldama and Killian Tilly who are good role players. Two players who have waited to talk about until the end of the video for a reason are Jaren Jackson Jr. and DeAnthony Melton. The reason for this is I feel the development of these two players in this season is going to determine how good the Grizzlies team can be this year. 
Jaren has been fantastic. Don't get me wrong. He's been elite on defense and has been playing at an all defensive level on that end with his help defense, shot blocking ability, rim protection and switchability. But the offense can definitely be better. The injury last season messed up Jaren's timeline offensively. He's been awesome in stretches this year. He's been better on the post. He attacks hard closeouts consistently and has been a good three point shooter for stretches. But consistency just isn't there yet. And he misses a lot of shots which he should be making in my opinion. Though him and Ja have been fantastic together, I feel like there's still an untapped level which they can reach together quite easily as time progresses. There's an entire new level the Grizzlies team can reach as a two-way team. And in my opinion, it depends on how much Jaren develops this season offensively. He's having a great season nonetheless. His rough start to the season makes his numbers look a lot worse than they actually are and the refs giving him many bad and nicky calls to put him in foul trouble makes his season look a lot worse than it actually is. The team is just better with him on the court on both ends of the floor and though the raw stats look rough, his on-off and impact metrics are great which show what I just said. Finally, Deanthony Melton. Melton is a really interesting player. He's good at basically everything except ball and and his entire offensive ceiling relies upon his dribbling ability. He has legit star potential as we saw very briefly in the start of the season, but he goes as far as his handle goes. And in my opinion, he's the X factor for this team this season and how much he can develop as the season progresses can be really impactful for the Grizzlies run which I expect to happen this season. I expect the Grizzlies to keep the 4th seed going into the playoffs. And until the Clippers and Nuggets are healthy, I feel like there's a clear tier gap between the top 3 teams, the Grizzlies and a tier below them. I really don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that they make a Hawks type playoff run. The resemblance between the two teams, from the depth of the team, the youth of the team and to having a star point guard running the show are very obvious. Though I strongly believe this is going to happen, even if this doesn't, one thing we know for sure is that the Memphis Grizzlies have arrived. They've made their mark in the Western Conference and have shown what they can do. And are going to show they're here and that they're here to stay and I cannot wait for it. With that, we've come to the end of the video. Leave a like if you've made it this far and subscribe if you haven't already.